if you hunt or hike or do anything outdoors, you would be appalled at the number of rattlesnakes you have walked by and didn't know were there. Rattlesnakes have always been a part of our folklore with you have the snake dances, the famous snake dances up among the Hopi. A lot of the movies were shot in Arizona, the old westerns, and they nearly always had, it seemed like you had to have an encounter with a rattlesnake. You know, that's western stuff, but it gets associated with, with Arizona. So we've got 13 different species of rattlesnakes recognized as inhabiting Arizona. In the general Phoenix area, there are anywhere from six to eight that can be found within the uh, Phoenix metropolitan area. Most people are bitten by the western diamondback rattlesnake, and that is responsible for most of the bites and most of the deaths, even though it's not the most toxic type of rattlesnake we have in Arizona. Mid to late March, these rattlesnakes are starting to leave their den sites, they're dispersing, and then as the temperatures trend into the warmer time of year in May, uh, uh, the temperatures will get too high for them to be out during the day, and they'll switch to nocturnal activity. This one was actually crossing the road right here yesterday, right up here by the call box, and so we're just going to take it over here, down from these homes, if this is its natural habitat. We don't want to let it go right across the street here because even though it's open, there's a house there, there's one here, and then of course we've got several down here. So what we're afraid of is, you know, uh, one, the animal um, getting involved with people and uh, somebody not seeing what we're doing, they're doing and stepping on it and getting bit. And second of all, you know, if we take him far enough away from the homes, he'll stay out in the open desert. There's plenty of rodents over there, so um, we won't have an issue with somebody trying to kill it. We get a lot of calls, and if it's a rattlesnake, what we'll do is we'll actually capture it. Uh, we charge $75 to come out to do this, and the $75 helps go to the uh, sanctuary here to keep it running. Okay, we're going to head on down to the wash down here. You can see this is a very natural terrain for these guys. This is their habitat. Unfortunately, you know, we've built out into the desert, so we're basically moving into their territory. So we'll let him go in this area here. They're trying to live with us and they don't understand that that rock that was there last year that they bass on is now somebody's patio. That's, that's the big issue that we run into. Come on, buddy. There you go. Now, see, immediately he's heading off into the brush and hiding. If, if you have a, um, a dog, uh, and they're far more susceptible to rattlesnakes than cats are for the most part. Uh, dogs, because of their very nature of the beast, they want to run up and put their nose on anything they're curious about, and that gets them bit oftentimes. The owner, as a responsible pet owner, should have their dog snake broke. We work to give the dogs three cues or associations in the training, three tools to locate a rattlesnake. The sound of a rattlesnake, the shaking of the tail, the movement, that particular sort of a movement pattern the rattlesnake has, and the scent of a rattlesnake. And of the three, scent is the most critical because it gives them the longest distance of protection. Movie images do a whole lot to shape uh, what the people's perceptions of a place uh, are. Uh, they, what they see in the films is what they believe. Because of the Westerns, because of the sensationalism, because of the myth and mystique that surrounds rattlesnake, they're always elevated to some you know, horrible threat out there waiting for the unwary, which in reality, they're just another part of the fantastic fauna that we have here in the state. And they're really a marvel, each and every one of them themselves. And, and instead of being afraid of them, we should appreciate them for what they are. And we should be aware of the potential threat they are to us, which is actually minimal if we pay attention to what we're doing and we don't get in harm's way.